Hello. In this video, we're going to go and look at how to use what's called the math class. Now, we've talked about the core operations that Java supports, but sometimes we want to do more advanced mathematical operations. And we could write all sorts of algorithms to do that. But remember, one of the wonderful things about programming nowadays is that people have written a lot of code that you can take advantage of and use. And it turns out Java contains a large amount of code to do mathematical types of things. So this is a line that a beginning programmer would often try and write. int num is equal to 8 to the power of 7, because generally speaking, we recognize this as the power operator. But notice if I run this, I get an error. That's definitely not correct. And what the program is actually doing is running an older version. It just, it won't run it. So, and notice the same thing happens if I try and do 2 to the power of 3. So we run this. And again, some funny things are happening, you see. So let's see if we can figure out how to, to perform a power operation. And to do that, we use a built-in class called the math class. It's really important we can find this documentation. So what I have here is simply a Google search bar. And if you type in math class and Java 7, in this class, we're actually using Java 6. But the most recent version of Java is Java 7, and it actually doesn't matter which one you use. It's just important to be aware that you're using Java 6 or 7 because sometimes you'll get directed to a very early version of Java, and they often add new things as Java has gotten better. So if I click here, I get into the math class, and we get a whole bunch of documentation. There's a lot of stuff in here right now that we're really not too concerned about being able to understand. What's really important is the following. A class we can think of at this point is, is like a toolbox, and it has a bunch of programming tools that you can take advantage of. Some of those are constants, like e and pi, which we'll see how to use next in the next video. But some of these are called methods. And methods are small little chunks of code that are, that are written that can go through and process something. And so what we want to do is use these methods. But in order to do that, it's important we know how to read the documentation. And it's read as follows. First, we want to find the method that is useful to us. And now we want to take the power. We want to perform a power operation. So I'm going to scroll through here and look. And sure enough, if I come down far enough, and it's in alphabetical order, and notice there's lots of them. Don't try and memorize them all. It's not worth it. You'll always have this at your fingertips. Oh, and we see there is an example of, of an operation called power. So if I take a look at this, there's the name. Then I have to look at what it takes, and I see it takes two doubles, a double called A and a double called B. So I have to give this method two things. The next thing I want to look at is what it returns, and I see that it returns a double. So in other words, I have to have a double variable ready to hold this value. The last important thing to look at is whether or not the word static is here. At this point, we're really not concerned about what static actually means. But what it does tell us is that if I want to use this method, I use it by calling it with the name of the class. So like, I, like we looked at the start, we are in what's called the math class. So to access the power method, if I just scroll down here again, oh, there it is. I'm going to type in math.pow. So let's jump into our program and use this, shall we? So if I go in here, I want to access the power. So I go math dot pow and I put a bracket and now I need to give it two doubles so let's give it a seven and an eight this is probably going to be a pretty big number now you see here I have an error so let's take a second and look at this if I go to the pow and hover over it it says type mismatch cannot convert double to an int so remember if we go back to our documentation the power method returns a double and if you look at this I'm trying to put it in an integer so let's convert this to a double. So now if I run this, there is 7 to the power of 8. I could do 2 to the power of 3. And we can also perform math around this. I could say 8 plus math.pow 2 to 3. And I run this, I'm going to get 16. 
the big thing to take away from this is how to read the documentation because you'll find as you move forward with your programming you are going to use all sorts of methods and part of it part of our skills we want to develop one of those skills we want to develop is the ability to read the documentation so remember a class contains fields which we haven't talked about yet and methods and methods are chunks of code that do something to use that method we look at the following we start by looking for the name of the method so another popular one is square root so if I scroll down here I think there's an SQRT there it is we see that we have the square root method it requires a double so I have to give it one double value and it returns a double so that's what it spits out I have to have a variable ready to hold that the last thing I want to look at is I want to look at the word static is here if the word static is there I call it by using the name of the class so if I jump back to my program here I might want to use the square root operation so I type in math and again a wonderful thing about Java is I put a dot here it gives you all of them so I can scroll down here for square root where is it there it is square root and it gives us our documentation it requires it requires a double and it spits out a double so let's say math square root of 169 oh, pardon me so if I run this now I get 13 and here's a nice little mathematical trick to show well not trick but a nice way to remember square root squared numbers if, if the square root of 169 is 13 the square root of 196 is 14 I hope that video helped